I introduced myself the other day, and we're running a little bit late, so I'm just going to start. Um, as when you had seen Bashar channel probably several times, um, ju I just need a little silence as I'm going in. Um, Alana is from the same place as Sasani as Bashar, so there are many similarities, but there are also many differences. The format of the interaction, though, is very much the same, where it'll say something at the beginning and then allow you to ask questions or make statements. Thank you for having me, and I'll see you later. <coughs> Greetings this morning of your time as you create time to exist. Allow me to entitle this interaction Acknowledgement and Denial dash the Drain. Understand the following to begin with as a foundational idea. You are, each and every one of you, one whole complete consciousness. Many times, due to how you have been taught in this reality, you within this wholeness divide yourself up into portion. Many times, a percentage of these portions are, shall we say, used to tuck things away that you do not wish to face. Many times you will refer to this as what you sometimes call the subconscious or unconscious mind. You do create your whole entire reality. And the portion of that reality that you do not take responsibility for, you deny. The ideas that you deny, you then store, or shall we say, put away into the unconscious or subconscious. Perhaps you can call it the subconscious closet. Some individuals will store so many things that perhaps it is more the size of a large room. You cannot truly keep anything in the closet for too long before it will then begin to knock upon the door of the closet. When you answer the door, so to speak, as an analogy, and confront, so to speak, the idea that emerges from it, you then acknowledge that idea and allow it to be free from that closet. Therefore, you can say that denial fills the closet and acknowledgement allows it to empty. The form that these ideas are in within the closet are your beliefs, your belief systems. As you have perhaps heard, your personality is comprised of three aspects. Your beliefs, emotions, and mentality or thoughts. Most often, when things knock on the door from within the closet to present themselves to you, for approval, so to speak, they do so in the emotional form. Remember that emotions do not exist within a vacuum. You do not simply feel this way or feel that way. Your feelings are always a result or a direct response to a belief. Each moment that you experience is unique and contains whatever parameters are within that particular moment. When your beliefs present themselves in the form of emotion, they do so within a certain situation or circumstance with very specific parameters. In general, because these are denied beliefs, non-preferred beliefs, they will result in emotions which you do not prefer. All one need do when an emotion presents itself in any given moment is ask themselves in this moment with what is right here in the timing of this moment. What must I believe to feel this way? If you are very specific in asking yourself this question and allowing yourself to see again what is right in front of you while you are feeling this, you will then almost always in that moment present the belief to yourself if you are honest with yourself. When you establish the belief, 
If you choose to deny that belief, it goes back into the closet. Here is the key. If you are willing to acknowledge the belief, once you have established it, it does not need to go back into the closet. Once you own or acknowledge a belief, only then can you change it. You already, when you believe something, feel, think, and act that way. And this is what creates the effect of any belief. When you acknowledge a belief, you equalize it to all other beliefs within you. Once you equalize them, you then have equal access to choose any belief, particularly one that you prefer, perhaps. Once you acknowledge a belief and decide that you do not prefer it, you can call forth a preferred belief or choice within you. Remembering that as you believe, so you feel, so you think, and then you act, you can extrapolate in your imagination or extend to your imagination how the new belief would feel and how you would then think and act with it. You are physical beings choosing a physical expression. And though the belief, thought, and actions set up the foundation, it is ultimately the action that you perform with that foundational belief that creates the physical reality. Therefore, when you establish the new preferred belief and allow yourself in saying it or speaking it to feel it and think that way, your imagination will show you how one with the new belief would act. If you choose to act this way, you can only get the effect of that belief. Therefore, once you acknowledge the old belief, and then decide to choose the new belief. When you then establish those actions and perform those actions, you once again get the effect of the new belief. You already uh, create this way. And all we are suggesting is moving your perspective a little bit over to acting according to the preferential belief. In accessing the subconscious closet, you may wish in that sense to not, shall we say, open the door and let them out all at once. But therefore, using your imagination as a tool, you can create within the closet a drain. This is only a symbolic analogy, but will allow you to begin to empty that closet at a comfortable rate. Therefore, just for a moment, close your eyes and create within your imagination your version, your idea in symbolic terms of your own closet. Note, if you will, the size of the closet. Allow yourself once again, perhaps in the center of the floor, so to speak, of the closet to create a drain that will allow the emptying of the closet at whatever rate and timing you find most desirable. You do not need, again, to create despair at emptying the closet if you feel this occurs too quickly, because you can always fill it again with more denial. But perhaps you will wish not to do so. Once you have created this idea, you may once again open your eyes. Now here is what you may expect from this point forward. Emotions will come up, some of which may again seem non-preferential or non-preferred. Because you have total control, you can once again deny them, returning them to the closet, or perhaps decide to acknowledge that emotion by allowing yourself to feel it. Perhaps if it is a negative emotion, you may wish to sit down, or perhaps allow yourself to be alone, it is up to you. The more that you allow yourself to feel the emotion, dive into the emotion, the easier it will be to establish the belief behind it. You may ask yourself once again, what must I believe to feel this way in this exact situation? A belief will then come forth 
and the obvious. Your willingness to acknowledge that belief, once you have established it, perhaps you can say, well, I do believe that. Again, allows you to choose the new belief, and then you may establish what it is you prefer to believe. By creating the preferred you in your imagination, and handing over the preferred belief, you may watch how that new you will act with the new belief. You know how you would act with the old belief. Now your imagination provides a new set of actions. When you have both sets of actions before you and have acknowledged the old belief, you have equal access to choose either action. Because the new belief is representative of the preferred you, in general, it will be most desirable or preferable to choose those actions, but they are all before you on one table now. If you feel that these emotions begin to occur too quickly and perhaps seem to overwhelm you, you may recreate the closet in your imagination and make the drain smaller. If you act according to the new preferred belief, you can only get the effect of the preferred belief, which is a preferred effect. As you begin to perform actions according to your preferred beliefs, those results replace the old non-preferred results and momentum. Therefore, you transform your reality very quickly and completely across the board. These are the simple keys to transforming your reality into the reality that you prefer through the acknowledgement of the beliefs you no longer prefer. Is this completely clear? Is anyone there? All right. Was that clear? All right. Not so clear. <laughs> we will allow in that sense, for the purposes of the establishment of clarity, for the procession to what you call the sharing. First, allow me to thank you and express my unconditional love and appreciation to you for your willingness to share in unconditional love and acceptance the reality that we now choose to co-create. We now proceed to the sharing, but before we do ask if your amplification system is functioning properly. Not really. The volume? Ice. It oh. seems to have decreased. Yes, I know. I think it was uh, going over to the other side, to the other tent. But that's Thank only you. him, maybe. Ice. Isn't that right? Perhaps you can consult your technician. As you say, testing one, two, three. Very good. All right. We will simply proceed and understand this, even this, to be synchronicity with the sharing. Please, in that sense, feel free to ask questions or, if you wish, and are perhaps bold, make statements. Shut it! I write dream diaries. And when I wake, wake up, I, before I wake up completely, I write these uh, diaries. That will be a very conducive time to do so. This morning I was dreaming, but it wasn't really a dream, and but it wasn't uh, this reality, but it was some other reality. And I was uh, writing, but it was hard to write, so I recorded it myself. I, so I recorded this message, which I got, and Perry, uh, Toby's wife, was talking about uh, the inside of pyramid, and I felt someone who, uh, many, um, some people who were around me and they were supporting me. So the dimension of my dream and the dimension of this reality was very close. And I'd like to continue that. So I would like you to give me an advice. Well, first of all, go right ahead and understand that it is that simple. Simply the desiring and the intention of that creates the vibration that allows you to experience it. Also understand that each and every one of you in participating in what you call the entrance to your pyramid have opened up many new doors within you. This will take various forms with various individuals, but again, everyone will notice something, though perhaps some will create more time between noticing it. 
Remember once again that you are all multi-dimensional beings experiencing the creation of a uni-dimensional reality. As you begin to transform into fourth density, one of the accompanying effects is to begin, simply begin, to begin to notice the other dimensions within you. You will do this along the path of least resistance, which at this point, what is most acceptable to most is what you call the dream state. What you call the dream state, what you create as a separation, as the dream state, is the period of timing that you access many of these other dimensions. Many times, while you are in the dream, you will feel it is as real as this dimension. Once you wake up, you will then say, well, it was all within me. This is a direct analogy to what you will experience upon what you call physical death. For once you do, in that sense, transform in the form you call death, you will then perhaps perceive in a very similar fashion that this reality that you believe to exist within, exists within you. You can, however, right now, create a bridge between what you call the sleeping dream reality and this waking dream reality. The way to do this is quite simple. Simply, when you quote-unquote awaken back into this dream, if you bring a memory of the other reality back with you, explore any way that you can apply as an action the information that you have brought back in this dream. By performing those actions that you would not necessarily have performed before, you will get an effect in this dream that you would not necessarily have gotten before. This begins in that sense to build the bridge. The more you are willing to do this, and again apply as an action in this dream, what you find from that dream, the more you begin to dissolve the distinction between the two. In fourth density, eventually you will dissolve this line altogether and simply be living the dream. Therefore, the more you are willing to act on what you find, the faster this will occur. Is this of service? Yes, I have one more question. Please proceed. It is our pleasure. Uh, yesterday, after the session in the pyramid, some of us saw um, UFO from Esatani. We were sure that they, that was a uh, UFO from Esatani. All right. If you but are that... sure, why are you asking? <laughs> I have no doubt. I, I don't have any doubt either. Oh, all right. It was nice to see. But Daryl said it wasn't. Ah, very interesting. I'm what sure did he say? Daryl said uh, that's an uh, uh, airplane or helicopter. Oh, all right. Once again, it is up to you. But However, <laughs> perhaps what he was referring to was such a craft. And perhaps what you are perceiving, he did not perceive for specific reasons. It will be up to you to decide. Many times discrepancies will be created to allow you to choose your own reality and remind you that you always do so. How fascinating. After that, I went to see another um, egg on UFO and I saw uh, like a face of the people from Africa. Oh, well, one moment. When I had asked the previous individual, they said that they were sure that it was our craft. Yet, did they then change their belief when Daryl had rendered his particular perspective? No. All right. Then allow us to be the validation of that perspective and again understand it was not Bashar's craft, it was my own. Sometimes <laughs> you will find the channels will be the last to perceive us. Ha ha. <laughs> so the image I, I saw of uh, people from Mesopotamia was what? What is the question? So she saw the, the image of people from Esafani. Is yes, she asking who they were? Yes. 
How many individuals did she perceive? One. All one. Did it have air? All one. Can she describe no, how she that, felt okay. when she saw it? Um, I saw this same uh, person before when I, uh, when I was meditating. So I think this is the same person. All right, but once again, perhaps what I am asking is this. How did it allow her to feel? Okay, did she feel as she felt when interacting with Bashar? Or did she feel more like she feels now in interacting with me? Um, maybe this session with you would be closer to the All right. feeling I had, but I was sure that it was from someone from Antipone. Well, then allow me to thank that individual for answering her own question. And the approach that I have taken has allowed her to be empowered to do so, so that perhaps if I am not around, she can still do so. Yes. I understand. Once again, allow me to elaborate on one particular point. We, Bashar and myself, are from the same society, and therefore, foundationally, there will be many similarities in the information that we share. Though on my planet we are all connected very strongly, we, however, still choose to experience and explore and maintain individuality. Therefore, primarily, the reason for a different individual coming through will be for the allowance of slightly differing points of view, and differing points of view are what establish individuality. Upon my planet, we recognize this in the form of the acknowledgement of the things that we do not prefer or agree with, but still validating them as a reality. Therefore, differences in point of view there are. However, if this appeals to you, you can each begin to do this yourself. Then you will be acting in a fourth density manner. Discernment is establishing your preference. You see something and you evaluate, this is me or this is not me. This is what I prefer, or this is what I do not prefer. This is discernment. Discernment. Judgment is saying, this is representative of who I am, this is not representative of who I am, and this stinks. You can simply establish your preference and not say that the thing you don't prefer stinks. When you judge the thing you do not prefer, it gives it more weight, not less. Therefore, it puts more momentum behind the thing you do not prefer and makes it more difficult to choose the thing that you do. If you are willing to acknowledge that the thing that you do not prefer has the right and the reason to exist, you equalize it to your preferred belief. Therefore, if you do not agree with something, you can still see it as fascinating for someone else. If you do this, it makes it easier to act toward the thing that you do prefer, thereby once again getting the preferred effect. Shedding. Are there any more questions yes. or statements? Yes. Um, I'd like to know the difference between the benefit which we get from enlightened people of this planet and from uh, the channel. Fundamentally, there is no difference. And understand what you call a master is always the first to tell you that you are a master as well. One who feels completely empowered will always, once again, not need anyone else's power. Therefore, fundamentally, there is no difference. However, we still desire and enjoy interacting in this way. And because your planet is now entertaining these ideas, this allows us to do so. So you may say that the enlightened individuals upon your planet have laid down the groundwork for us to enjoy you as well. Remember also, each time that I discover something new, a new expression within all that is, I then expand 
my universe, and this mm -hmm. delights me. Therefore, in this regard, I thank you all. Is there anything else? Betty, please do. And my, I have a headache, and I feel cold. All right. These are simply bodily, shall we say, results of what you might call resistance. Simply allow yourself to breathe deeply and purposefully. Allow the issues that come up to be viewed by you in peace. You then will begin to allow yourself to digest them. And this will allow you, in that sense, to begin to release these ideas. On a more physical level, perhaps some more sleep and what you call water will assist as well. But the breath, the breathing, is key. And when something comes up, as we have shared, in the form of an emotion, feel that emotion and ask yourself what you must believe in joy. Do so in joy because you know that you now are creating opportunities to transform the rest of what is within that closet. Allow yourself to lighten up. This results in enlightenment. Is there something specific in sharing this with you that now comes up that you wish to discuss? Emotion, you mean? Anything. Although I want to give everyone unconditional love, but my ego's um, preventing me. Well, understand. Perhaps it will first insist that you give yourself unconditional love, including that ego. Perhaps in a sense you can say, I mean this colloquially, it is jealous. So give it attention first. Your ability to unconditionally love others will always only be an extension of your willingness to allow unconditional self-love. When you judge yourself or others, you can only create that vibration if you impose conditions. So when you find yourself doing so, simply remind yourself that you no longer wish to impose conditions and will settle for nothing less than complete, unconditional self-love. Is anything that you do truly worth the withdrawal of your complete self-love? We say no. But all that is loves you so unconditionally, it will always be your choice. Because all that is loves you unconditionally, always, if you remind yourself of this, you can allow yourself to feel it. Then you can copy that. Very simple. Unless you prefer complexity. I need not tell you that is an option. However, it is also that simple. Because this love of all that is is constant, you can always feel it. All that is will never judge you and never judge your ego as well. What you are referring to as ego does not control you. It is simply the portion of you that allows you to maintain focus in physical reality. Allowing yourself to understand this. Therefore, if you maintain the perspective that your ego simply maintains your focus, you will not overwork it. If you overwork it, it becomes cranky. It is up to you. But again, your willingness to unconditionally love yourself is the key. Will that do? Yes. Oh, thank you. Shut it. They say that uh, there's going to be a transformation within the next 20 years. One moment. It has already begun. You are within it. Perhaps in the next 20 to 30 of your years, you will perhaps feel that you are already through it. Yes. Have a good time. In book, there's, uh, they said that there's going to be a, a big um, flood, a big flood, or you know, natural disaster. But they, there won't be something uh, like that happen. The idea is that there may be isolated events, but these predictions were made in a time where only was there the understanding that great change could occur by first breaking down the old reality. It was the sensing of change itself with the superimposition 
of perhaps you can say past memories that it would take place in that form. Proceed. Uh, okay, I understand. Oh. Shut it! Uh, this, is, this is going to be the last person. <laughs> last All right. Person. If you wish. It is up to you. Since I went into the pyramid, like the person before, am I, am I eternal or internal organ? The the long uh, tube-like organ? I don't know the name. Intestine. We understand. Intestine. Yeah, that hurts. I, I'd like to know the reason why I get uh, this um, diarrhea or uh, intestine disorder. In a sense, once again, we suggest deep breath and clear intention or perhaps you are erratic in shall we say beginning to allow the releasing of many beliefs sometimes what you may call the elimination but you cannot truly get rid of anything did you access all three levels of the pyramid Okay. We, we, didn't, we didn't go uh, to the pit. All right. Understand the following. You can go into the pit in your imagination as well. Simply understand that you can look at the pyramid itself, close your eyes and retain that image, create a long, narrow passageway with a downward incline. In your imagination, crawl through there and allow yourself to plant your feet firmly on the ground. In closing, we simply say the following. As an analogy, the pyramid can represent the following method of creating your own reality consciously. What you call the king's chamber will represent your clear intention. This is what you truly wish to do, and therefore establish that you do not hope that you can do it, but that you intend that no matter what, you will. This locks in the vibration of your truest intention. The queen's chamber, which is perhaps the heart, in a sense, of the pyramid, will represent clear desire, clear deservability, and clear definitions or beliefs according to your clear intention. The pit, Listen. as you said, will represent clear action, the grounding, the bringing of all this mental stuff into your physical reality. You are physical beings in a physical world, and the action is the bottom line. Your willingness to access the pit in your imagination, and then as often as possible, as intentionful as possible, beginning to act according to your truest desires, deservability, definition, and intention, will establish the balance that will result in, shall we say, the restoration of what you call your system. Therefore, get going and have a good time. At this timing, we thank you all for your willingness to explore the many corridors that you create within the wholeness of your consciousness. As you allow these ideas within what you have considered your subconscious closet to drain out a bit at a time, and upon acknowledging the belief, choose a new belief and act, 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 move, do, according to the new belief, all will make sense. All will come together. And you will manifest the reality that you prefer with exactly the same methods that you are manifesting your reality right now. We once again thank you, wish you a most fond and loving good morning, and we'll see you in your dreams. Good day.